Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here, videocopilot.net. And welcome to another very exciting tutorial. Today we're gonna pick up where we left off on creating this 3D crater. And uh, here is a quick example of uh, what we're gonna be doing. Basically, we're gonna be putting a hole in the street, adding some debris, and the smoke and sparks will be doing in After Effects. But the idea is to create this 3D hole. Now, we've tracked our footage in Buju in the first part of this tutorial, and now we're gonna go ahead and import that data into 3D Max. So, what I have here is our Crater Scene Max script file. Drop that right into the perspective view, and it creates some points. Now, I'm gonna go into the project settings. We're gonna set it to HDTV, and we're gonna set it to 1280 by 720. That's the format of our video. We're gonna close that and I'll right click and choose show safe frame and that way we get the correct aspect ratio I'll right click on the perspective and we'll select camera one so the camera we created in Buju is now here and we see we have all of our points and they're hard to see I'll select them go to object properties and we'll set this to pink I love that color um, okay so easy enough, now let's create our viewport background. So uh, we'll go to view, viewport background, then we'll click on files, change the file type to all formats, we'll select the first image of our image sequence, check sequence, choose open, that looks good, choose OK, and display as background, and choose OK. So now we have our animation in the background, and it lines up perfectly. I'll go ahead and make this a little bigger. Now we also want to put the video into the environment background. So I'll go to environment and we'll click on none, add a bitmap, double click, select it, sequence, open, OK, and we'll close it. And then we'll come down here to the time controls and we'll go ahead and set it to film frame rate 24 and choose OK. So now we're set up to create our plane. Now, this whole process can be used for a number of things, um, namely incorporating 3D animation with your live action footage. A uh, quick example, we have this text that is on the floor here, is casting shadows, and uh, pretty cool. We can do that uh, relatively easy. Um, a quick way to create a perfect ground plane is to take the line tool, and on this 3D snaps, bring that up, right click on it, Make sure you have pivot selected, close that. And what you can do is click on these points and draw a shape all around and close spline. And what that does is creates a flat plane that adheres to the surface of the street based on the tracking data that we've exported. So this is probably the most accurate way to get a flat plane. And then what we would do is select that line, modify, select the spline, and select all of it. Right click, scale, and then scale it up till it's large enough. And that um, we can right click and convert to uh, editable poly. And now we have a perfect ground plane. And go create some text, add a bevel, let's see, uh, looks good, um, we can scale it down also, also we can shut off the snap at this point. Now uh, we'll take the green object properties and we'll switch it to something a bit easier to see. And what we need to do is line up the max text to lay on the surface since it's not perfect with our scene. And we can rotate it a bit and move it down. And if you look in the view here, you can see when it intersects. And you can rotate it until uh, you get it just right. So then we can add a quick uh, skylight turn on the shadows, set it to maybe five. And if you hit M, bring up the materials, we can uh, create a quick matte shadow material. And we'll click on matte shadow, drop that onto the floor. 
Also, we'll select that plane, Object Properties, See-Through, OK. And maybe just give a gray material to our max text. Brighten that up a bit. So uh, this is just a quick way. We'll lower the res and uh, just click Render. So here you can see uh, we've added some shadows and it looks pretty much like it's in the scene. You can play around with the light color and increase the samples to make a softer shadow. Also, uh, be sure to check out the 3D tutorials on videocopilot.net. And uh, if you're new to After Effects, just a reminder, check out the After Effects basic training. Um, there's some other cool uh, tutorials on 3D Max that may go over some more of the basics uh, so you can uh, follow along a little bit smoother. Uh, so just want to point that out. Now, back to this tutorial. It's not on 3D text. So we're going to delete all this. And uh, we're just going to get started on creating our crater. Okay, so I have some images here, and one is an outline of the crater that I created in Photoshop with cracks and things. And we're going to drag this into the top view. And we're going to set as a viewport background only. Choose OK. And in the viewport background setting, be sure you have match bitmap selected and lock, zoom, and pan. Then choose OK. And that way we can move it around here. And I'll right click, turn off the grid, and we'll come over here to the line tool. And what we want to do is draw an outline around this area. Now you want to draw just on the inside of the main black area. So just go ahead and uh, start outlining this. Click. You can click and drag to make sort of a rounded edge. Or just click to make a more sharp edge. A sharp edge might be a good idea since this is a crater. And uh, it would be kind of rough. and we close it off yes so that's kind of the main part and we can go into the modify and edit any of the points uh, for that line and move them around and you know fix them up if we need to now we also need to create another line and this is going to be the outside area so we'll just kind of draw a quick box close spline yes and go to the modify and what we want to do is click attach multiple, select that line and choose attach. So now it's a single object and we'll go to the modify and we'll choose bevel. And what we want to do is set the level one to negative, maybe negative one and level two to a little bit more. And that way we kind of have a little bit of an edge for our street. We also might play around with the bevel Maybe 0.2 kind of gives it a nice edge. And uh, we can right click and turn off the grid in the view here as well. So the idea here is to be able to see the inner edge of the hole, but also have a flat surface that we can put rocks and debris on. So this is a good start for right now. And uh, we'll go ahead and move on to the next part, which is creating the hole in the ground. So we'll go ahead and change this to a perspective view. And that way we can move around and uh, we won't be stuck in that camera view. And we can always just switch back to the camera at any time. P on the keyboard will also do that for you. So I'm going to create a plane and uh, we'll make it roughly the size of our hole. And we'll move it over to the side here. And we're going to go ahead into the modify, set the lengths to 75 by 75. And that just creates a lot of segments. And then if we select the object, modify. We'll go in here, we'll choose displace. And we're going to add a bitmap. So here we have the new crater JPEG. And I think it's some NASA picture. And I just fixed it up by darkening the hole. And this is going to work as sort of a depth mat where the white is going to be high and the black is going to be low. So we'll drop that right into the bitmap for the displacement and we'll set the strength up. And as I do that, you can see we're creating a very cool looking landscape. And of course this can be used for all sorts of things. Um, this is just a nice way to get a natural looking landscape, uh, relatively easy. And uh, that's a good start. We'll just uh, pump that up. 
Now to add detail, just increase the amount of segments. Uh, but be careful because uh, that could make your computer a bit slow. So we'll keep it at 75 by 75 just uh, while we work. And uh, there's also some options here to blur it out um, to make it a little smoother and things like that. So pay attention to uh, cool settings like those. So now we've created the crater and we want to move it underneath our hole. So we'll just slide it over and we need to move it down. So we'll just move it down. By the way, to maximize your viewport, you can just click this button here. Um, Alt W also, depending on which version of Max. So the problem is we have this top part that extrudes a little bit too much. So we're going to use a slice modifier. So scroll down, get the slice modifier, and click on the little plus, and we'll take the plane, which is right here at the bottom, and we'll move it up, and we'll remove the top. And that'll basically just cut it off and give us sort of a flat surface. And we might move it down just a little more to get rid of any of the excess. So good way to uh, set this up. And we'll go ahead and move this over and just line it up. Move it over some more here. And that looks pretty good. Go to the top view to make sure we have the whole hole covered. And we go to the viewport background, or actually we can right click and turn off show background. And that'll work out well. Move the crater. And then we'll go back into camera one. And so now we can see uh, you know, what we have going. Now we need to do some texturing and uh, all that, but let's go ahead and build more of our scene and we'll do the texturing uh, last. Now in the previous tutorial, we learned how to create some chunks of road. So I'm going to go ahead and skip that part. And uh, what you're going to want to do is just follow that and create some pieces of a street, you know, where we draw an outline and we add a bevel and such. So I'm going to go ahead and just delete that and we'll just use simple boxes to illustrate uh, what we're going to be doing. So I'm going to draw a box here. So just imagine this is a burnt piece of road and what you want to do is hold down shift and make copies of it and you just want to put them all over the scene in sort of key places that uh, will look cool and you can rotate these and uh, you know just give them sort of a natural look um, and that way it looks like there's some real 3D in the scene when the camera comes around the hole. So those are going to be sort of the key shots and also take some of those pieces and you know drag them and place them you know inside of the hole and like lay them down um, against the wall uh, is one of the things that I was able to do in the uh, in the original example and uh, just kind of makes it look like pieces kind of fell into the hole and stuff. And of course, when you use real looking pieces, it'll look a lot cooler. Um, so that's that. Now, we also want to add a bunch of small pieces of debris. Now for that, I'm going to create a quick box. And also, you want to create either a dirt piece or a piece of debris. Um, here, I'm just creating uh, this box, this little green box. And we're going to use that as sort of the pieces that are going to be scattered across the road here. So we're going to create a shape. We're going to create a line. And we'll zoom in here. And we're just going to draw a shape around the outside of our crater. And another shape around the outside of that. And we'll go again and attach multiple, select that first line, attach. So now we have a single object and we'll convert it. Right click, convert to editable poly. And uh, so now there's a green surface. So what I'm going to do now is create a particle system. So hit 6 um, or just go into uh, particle systems and PF source and uh, just add that into your scene and click on particle view and here we're gonna make some uh, modifications in order to add some pieces on the surface of our street so firstly on the birth operator we'll set it from 0 to 0 and we'll do 500 pieces 
Now the position, we'll go ahead and delete that. We're going to add a position object. And we'll turn off speed, we'll delete that. Rotation, uh, we can leave that. Shape, we'll delete that. And we're going to add a shape instance. So the shape instance, we're going to go ahead and select the green box. Now, as in the previous tutorial, we created a piece of dirt. And that's what you're going to want to use for this particular option. And we're going to go click on the geometry type, select that box. And now that's added into this operation. And we'll set the scale to 50, the variation to 75. And I'll show you what that does in a moment. Now the position object, we want to go ahead and make the position onto this green shape that we just created. And so we'll go ahead and click uh, add and we'll select that green shape. And so instantly you can see those particles are now all over the surface of our street. Now I'm going to go to the display and set it to show geometry. And so now we can see a bunch of uh, little boxes all over the place. And for the rotation, we'll choose random horizontal. We also want to grab that green object. And if we want to modify it, go to the line tool and just move some of the pieces around. You can see it fills in that area because the pieces are on the surface. Now be careful because you don't want pieces to be in the way where your actor is walking because then you have to do some rotoscoping. You don't want to do that. So just be careful and we'll take that green object and hide selection. And that way the pieces are just on top of the surface. Um, we can add more pieces by just increasing it to say 1200. And uh, you, know, you can see it fills in uh, a bit like that. So ultimately that's uh, what we're creating. And let's go ahead and take a look at texturing. So we're going to grab our bottom object, so our street object, and that's the blue scene here. And I'm going to right click and convert to an editable poly. And what I want to do is set it up for a multi sub object material. And I'll explain that in just a moment. First, select the entire mesh. And we'll scroll down here. And we're going to go ahead and set the ID to number two. What I want to do is select the top surface and set it to one. And that's going to help us when we're texturing this image. So click that off and let's go ahead and bring up our materials. So we'll go rendering. Material Editor. So we'll select an empty material, click on Standard, and we're going to change it from a standard material to a multi sub object material and choose OK. Discard old map, that's OK. And for the first material, we'll just quickly change this to red. And we'll click here and we'll change this to green. And then we'll come into the multi sub object material, and this is the road. And we'll take the red material and drag it into the first slot as an instance and the green material into the second slot as an instance. And then if I take our multi sub object material, drop it onto the street, you can see the inside is now green and the outside is red. Now we do have our green box here and we'll go ahead and hide that. So we've basically designated which areas are going to get which texture. Now we also need a material for the dirt. So We'll grab our dirt texture, drop that right onto that slot, and then drag this down onto that, and now it has sort of a brown texture. We'll go down to UVW map, the bottom of the list, change it to box, and maybe 100 by 100 by 100. And so we kind of created a dirt texture there, and uh, you can see it's sort of 3D. Um, we also want to add our street texture, but we also want to mix it with some cracks. So we're going to be doing some fancy things here with some textures. So here's our matte shadow material, and this is going to be important, but we also need to create a street looking material. So we'll take our asphalt, drop that into this slot, and we'll call this street. Now the material we're actually going to be using is another material, and so we'll click on another empty slot, and this will all make sense in a moment. Click on standard and we're going to change it to a blend material and choose OK. And we'll discard old map. And a blend material allows you to blend together two separate materials into one. And the difference between a blend material and a multi sub object material is the multi sub object has separate materials for specific faces 
and a blend material is a single material with just two different textures. So for the first material, I'm going to use our street. So we'll drag that into material slot one as an instance, and we'll take the matte shadow and drop that into slot two. Now for the mask, we're going to use the shadow matte image. So we'll drop that right on there. And so now you can see that texture has kind of an interesting mix between the matte shadow, which remember is the transparent material and the street material. So in the street or the road material, let's go into the texture. So the diffuse or the color is our texture. We'll click on that and we'll tile it. So it's kind of large, but we'll set it to maybe 10 by 10. And so now it's very small bits. And, and back in the multi sub object, we're going to replace the red material with our street material. So we'll drop that right onto the red as an instance. And for the green material, we're just going to use straight asphalt. So we'll drop that into the green slot as an instance. OK, currently we have our multi sub object material on our street object. But I'm going to go ahead and switch that out temporarily. So what I'm going to do is copy our mask, paste it into the diffuse channel of just a separate material, click on that material, click on the show in viewport, and drop that right onto the line. Now, I'm going to go into the modifier and choose UVW map. And instantly you can see, we'll right click and show smooth with highlights. You can see we have our texture covering over this image, but the problem is not lined up with our hole. So what we want to do is move it around and adjust it perfectly. So we can click on the gizmo for the UVW mapping and move it over. And we can also change it to box and let's see, we'll zoom in here and we want to scale it down. Now the image is looping around the edge, but that's okay. And we'll fix that in a moment. So I'm going to go and close out and we'll back up. And what's good about this is now we know the material is going to line up perfectly. So we'll click on M, bring back our materials, and we'll take our multi sub object material, drop that down there. Now everything should render out correctly. Okay. So this is looking pretty good. Um, definitely illustrates what we've been doing here. Now, one thing we can do is play around with the mix of that texture. Here we can see it's a little soft. It's not as harsh as it could be. So what we can do is go into the material that is the blend material and play around with the mixing of the mask. So we can use a curve and the curve is basically a way to blend it. And if we bring that up, we can see the difference without the curve. It blends it like that. We turn that on and the blending is a lot harsher. So I'll go ahead and make a duplicate of this uh, viewport render and go ahead and render it out again and uh, we'll be able to compare the two. Okay, so you can see it's a little bit darker, but we might even adjust our street material so it's even darker. And so what we'll do is go in here, we'll set it to black and then we'll come into the maps and we'll blend the diffuse texture of the asphalt with the black color and we'll set this to maybe 70 and we'll go back in here and here's what happens when you adjust the curve sort of gives either a harsh edge or a soft edge and uh, you know that looks pretty good and let's go and do one more render to see if we can get it looking uh, a little bit better so F9 okay so it's uh, looking pretty good now we may want to adjust the position of all of our objects in our scene so that we're covering over uh, you know most everything also we'll click on this and we'll set it to see through and that way we kind of see uh, what's going on here um, I'll go ahead and select everything um, except the camera um, actually I just want to select geometry so we'll change this to geometry and then select all this and we'll just slide it over and uh, Just want to move it around so that he isn't standing in the hole. So we'll just slide it away from him a bit. Also, if I unhide all, I can grab that green object and also move it over. 
which we'll move our particles over. We'll go ahead and hide that green object and we'll hide the green object also. Now obviously you want to render out something other than uh, you know boxes it looks like maybe a truck full of like huge Legos crashed and maybe just spilled them all over the floor but um, also just to kind of compare uh, with what I did originally basically we have the pieces of the street and everything kind of goes in that direction uh, we have the little pieces of asphalt but there's also the brown pieces of uh, the dirt also and uh, you know you can just play around with the blending and uh, you know those materials see there's two materials where you have the top as sort of the color of the street and the bottom and the side is sort of the dark color of the asphalt and using that multi sub object material you can do that uh, relatively easy and just check out the previous tutorial for uh, tips on that so anyway um, this is uh, looking pretty good and uh, we want to go ahead and render it out so we'll go into the render settings and we'll set the range from 0 to 171 and back to full resolution. Now for the output, we want to make sure we set to PNG and we'll call this crater and save 48 bits alpha channel OK and go ahead and click render and uh, it may take a while but it should look pretty cool when we start compositing in After Effects. We'll go and tackle some more compositing tips in the next tutorial We'll be adding some smoke and some more texture on the ground to make it really look beat up. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this. My name is Andrew Kramer, and uh, be sure to check out our bullet training DVD. If you're looking for a more in-depth look at integrating 3D with After Effects, including Cinema 4D and Blender, uh, you know, be sure to check it out. It shows you everything you need to know, including basic setup for the program and not just a quick run through, but an in-depth look at, you know, the settings and, you know, the interface. So be sure to check it out. And of course, don't forget to check the blog. We uh, try to update as much as we can. And we have a great forum where uh, a lot of active users are sharing information and expanding on tutorials and just a lot of learning going on. So be sure to join up. Uh, we want you to be a part of this great community. So until next time, uh, keep your eye on the sky.